Guys, how we doing? Welcome to the channel. Courtney Scott with Goodworks Tractors, talking about flail mowers. We got the, uh, the small, the standard, the manual offset mower here. We have the hydraulic offset mower over on the 4066R. A little bit of a different visual comparison there where you can physically see them side by side. They are gonna come in roughly the same width. Um, variations that you can get but there's gonna be some big differences we're gonna get into that in this video so guys if you like what you see here I'd love to get a thumbs up from you make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below and as always read through the description right underneath the video all sorts of helpful links down there including links to where you can buy these Del Marino flail mowers or head on over to goodworkstractors.com okay so this is a product overview video both on the Del Marino Funny Top and the Del Marino Centurion flail mowers, all right? So we're gonna go over and detail the different options, the different setups, what size tractor they're a good fit for, other requirements you may need. So the dimensions, the width that you can get the Funny Top flail mower in is gonna be 32, 42, 52, or 62 inches wide. So what you see here is gonna be a 52 inch wide variant. I am actually going to run a 62 inch wide on my machine on my 1025R this year, just to try it out. Um, it's a little deceiving. The 1025 is four foot wide, but of course I'm running running the dual wheel setup so it actually makes it more like 72 inches wide but if you do have this completely moved over to the side you still have plenty of overhang even with a dual wheel setup now on to this guy right here the centurion series this is going to be available in 42 52 and 62 inch variants i kind of thought i would want there to be a wider option available however once you have this thing side shifted all the way out and rotated down or even when it's in more of a vertical position you start to feel it from the operator station. So on a four series, like my 4066R, you know I do have a lot of liquid ballast, wheel weights, planting it to the ground, but if you had a larger utility tractor, like a five or a six series, you could certainly get away with a larger um, implement pushed out to the side. However, without proper counterweight over here to offset that, I can see why you would start to feel a little queasy. Now, one thing to note is you are gonna see the numbers listed like 158 and 132. That's gonna be in the metric system. I am converting that and giving you the imperial system of 62 inches and 52 inches, just for easier reference. If we wanna talk about the size and material that this mower and that mower can cut, this range here is gonna be up to an inch and a half thick, while over here on the Centurion, you're gonna go up to two inches thick. However, part of that is gonna be relegated to what type of blades you have on either machine. You can get Y blades, you can get hammer blades. You're gonna see Y blades currently on this unit here and hammer blades over there. The Y blades are gonna be really good for grasses, light materials, weeds, while the hammer blades are gonna be a lot better at the thicker woody material, like your, your brush, you know, autumn olive, could be small saplings. The trade-off is gonna be with Y blades, it's gonna give you a lot smoother, clean, crisp cut. A lot of folks actually mow their lawns with a Y blade flail mower. On the flip side, with the hammer blades, they're gonna obviously go through that thicker, nastier material, but it's not gonna be as smooth. It's gonna be a little more of a coarse or uneven cut, potentially. Probably a lot better still than a brush dog is gonna give you, but they're gonna be more durable and aggressive blades meant to tackle that nastier material. Now let's talk about your height of cut that you have. So you have two ways to adjust your height of cut and the range is going to be about an inch and a half all the way up to four inches high. So the first way that you can adjust the height of cut is going to be uh, by adjusting the roller. You have a couple different holes, actually three different holes, one that's the bolt is currently through and then two more and you'll see over on the uh, Centurion model as well it's just a little bit different setup. Same three holes are just kind of tucked underneath but that'll give you maybe an inch to an inch and a half of adjustment right there by putting putting it in one of the other holes. So the other way you're gonna get greater control or variation in your height of cut is to adjust the length of your top link. So over here you have the manual top link and you can see the hydraulic top link that we have on the 4066. Either way, you know, you retract it or you let it extend out, that's gonna give you the adjustment that you need there. So keep in mind when you extend that out or retract it, your pivot point is way down here at that roller. That's the point that's making contact on the ground. It's in intentionally making contact on the ground. So you're adjusting your angle, you know, from the end of your top link down to the roller. So right in that range, if you think about it, draw a line there and you can kind of visualize as you would extend or retract that top link, how it's gonna make that adjustment. 
Now the amount of offset that you can actually get, so the amount you can shift it over to one side or to the other side even, is going to vary based on the size that you start out with. So if you have the 32, 42, 52, 62, you know, the overall piece of equipment is only so long. And so the amount it can offset is going to change or the amount it can stick out uh, from the side is going to change. So, so what we'll do to make it a little bit easier is there's actually a chart supplied from Del Marino. I'm just gonna put that in the individual listings on my website at Goodworks Track so you can grab that information there depending on the size that you're looking at. And why you might want to offset one of these and why it's so handy to do so is for applications like fence rows or it could be a pond bank or it could be a ditch bank as well. Something where you don't want to get your equipment right down to it or on an incline or you know next to a, a row of trees right along your fence row too. So it's a nice way to get that extended out without having to drive your tractor right there as well. So if we talk about requirements for hookup, it's really simple on these manual offset Del Marinos. All you need to do is hook it up to your three-point hitch and your 540 RPM rear PTO. To sum that up, that is gonna be any subcompact or compact tractor. They're all gonna be category one and 540 RPM rear PTO is standard as well. So if we talk about the bigger Centurion series offered by Del Marino, these are actually gonna be category one and category two three-point hitch compatible. We still have the 540 RPM rear PTO. So really they're both cat one, three-point hitch, 540 RPM rear PTO. The bonus is you can also put this on a Cat 2 three-point hitch as well. Now the one bad piece of news is that neither of these are quick hitch compatible. I know, they're red, right? Just like the quick hitch as we all know the Spico. But for some reason, the hotbed of flail mowers is over in Italy, which is where these come from. They must just not believe in quick hitches over there. Maybe someday they'll make an improvement, but that would be about the only downside if I could find anything bad to say about these. So on this series, you do have two different hydraulic cylinders. One is going to hydraulically offset. The other is gonna hydraulically tilt either way. Pretty cool. Uh, you might see these little snap covers here. They're actually just holders so that when you don't have your flail mower hooked up, you can put the ends of the fittings right in here. It's a really nice uh, little design there. I'm sure some other manufacturers have them, but this is the first time for, uh, for me seeing this and I, I really like that. So you're gonna see you got four hoses. That means you need two circuits that are on your tractor to run this in addition to what you have your loader plumbed into already. So this um, hydraulic multiplier that I have here is starting to pay dividends. I've had this Centurion flail mower since last fall waiting to get this hydraulic multiplier installed. You know we had it hooked up recently to uh, my snowblower so that was fantastic and and now we're utilizing it here for the flail. So beware that you have to have the additional circuits on your tractor in order to run this flail mower and I've got a lot going on here. I'll briefly explain it. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but this is a hydraulic multiplier. If you have one additional circuit on the back of your tractor, so say you have a third function on there already, you can plug this whole multiplier right into that third function, and then you can get just two additional functions, or three or four or six, however many you want. They sell different sizes. That way you can control you know, the tilt cylinder that's on the flail, the offset cylinder, and then not sacrifice your loader functions as well. So for me, I have the hydraulic top and the tilt cylinder as well. So I've got one, two, three, four additional circuits that I need with this current setup. You know, with my snowblower, I actually also utilize this outlet right here. I went with the six port just because why not? What this allows you to do is select the circuit from inside the cab, just a little switch panel on there, and then you can move your lever or your push button either way to control the tilt either direction or side shift or go back to your normal operation. This is really about the most cost effective way to add on additional hydraulic circuits to your tractor. You can get this at Summit Hydraulics. There is going to be a link down below in the description. Also one of my website at Goodworks Tractors. The best part about it is you can get 5% off with code GWT. So contact the folks over at Summit directly. Mention the code GWT. They'll get you set up with exactly what you need. It's the most cost effective way to get into these additional hydraulics. So they do look pretty similar in construction. You can see it side by side, but if you get a good look at them kind of from a low profile stance here, you can definitely see that one is a lot more robust than this little guy over here. And that's intentional. That's by design. You know, a smaller tractor like a 1025 or a similar subcompact. It could be a Kubota, Mahindra, Coyote, any of those are gonna be just fine with any of the variations, the 32 all the way up to the 62. The horsepower range for these smaller funny tops is gonna to be 12 to 35 horsepower. So what's underneath the hood there? So that's gonna cover all the subcompacts. It doesn't matter the brand, Kubota, Mahindra, John Deere. It's gonna cover subcompacts and also smaller compacts. On the Centurion series, however, of course, designed for larger tractors in the 30 to 70 horsepower range. So this is really going to cover 
your 3 Series and your 4 Series, your Kubota Ls and Grand Ls, or anything equivalent by Mahindra or somebody else. You know, along with that, you're going to have a lot more weight compared to what's on these smaller um, attachments right here. That's to be expected to put up with the extra force and the just the, the the brute strength of these larger machines okay so if we're talking about weights comparing apples to apples let's say 52 inch versus a 52 inch i'm just going to go round numbers to make it simple let's call this 400 pounds let's call this 800 pounds so you have literally double the weight in this attachment right here versus what you have over here oh and i do want to point out you do have an aluminum gearbox over on the funny top while you're going to find a cast iron gearbox up here on the centurion and so i think these are set up appropriately right a manual offset on one of these lighter weight attachments is going to be perfectly fine however i definitely appreciate having the hydraulic offset over here on the centurion you know so a few final thoughts these are uh, definitely well labeled well identified with all the varying grease points all around here so make sure you get yourself a good grease gun loop shuttle that's a great system you get five percent off with code gwt so you're also going to have belt tensioners that are found on either setup here either series you're going to have a gearbox up here that feeds over to a belt drive system and so this is going to allow for some slippage so if you hit something that's hidden like a stump um, or a big boulder whatever's you know that you just miss when you're driving over it but you are going to have those blades as well and those really react well to kind of skipping over something so it's a big drum that's down there spinning with the hammers or the y's on it that are just kind of on a little uh, hinge so to speak so if they hit something they're just going to kind of flip and give as you go over it and by the time you know, spins back around, you're already well beyond there. You know, so these units are definitely gonna be more money than most brush hogs out there if you're comparing the same size, you know, a 60 inch versus a 60 inch. However, there's a lot of benefits that you get with one of these flails that you don't get with a brush hog. There's so many configurations, whether it's with the Centurion or the Funny Top, it's just too many prices to put into a video. So go to goodworkstractors.com, you'll get the information right there in the listings. I'm relatively new to flail mowers myself. First time using one was last fall and I absolutely fell in love with it. I just really can't see myself going back to using a brush hog in a traditional sense, you know, on a regular basis. I love the compact nature of the flail mower. I love the offset ability of it. It doesn't have to be offset. You can still center it behind your machine if you want to. And just the maneuverability without having to take up more trailer space if I'm, if I'm traveling or even storage space as well. So if you want to see these flail mowers in action, I'd encourage you to check out the past video that I did or subscribe, follow along for the future videos that we do showing these things at work. And as always, if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you do hit that subscribe button right down below and read through the description as well. All sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Oh,